Hello everyone. In this video, I'll provide the information about the very basic yet important topic in Azure networking. It is Azure Virtual Network Peering. First, I'll discuss what is VNet Peering, its different features and types, and then the use cases, advanced configuration, as well as some consideration or the limitation while creating the virtual network peering. And finally, a step-by-step -step deployment in the lab. So let's start. Let's assume a scenario that we have a single subscription. Now in this subscription, if we create a virtual network and in the virtual network, if we have multiple subnets, then the virtual machines within those subnets can connect to each other directly without any problem. So by default, system routes are configured the way that the virtual machines within the virtual network can communicate with each other. And if you want to manage or filter the traffic between these virtual machines, then you can use the route table or the network security group. So now if we we'll create another virtual network and create a subnet in it, then the virtual machine in those subnet cannot communicate to the virtual machine in another subnet. So by default, the virtual machines from one virtual network cannot communicate to another virtual network. So to overcome this problem, we can create a public IP to these servers. And using this public IP over the internet, these servers can communicate with each other. But there are two reasons this is not recommended. First one, because your data will be traveling through internet and it's against the best practices of security that your internal traffic should not be flowing through the internet. Another reason is that whenever the data goes out of the Azure, there is an egress charge attached to it. So if the traffic will connect through the internet, then it will leave the Azure and there will be charges to it. So previously to overcome this solution, the site to site VPN were used to create between the virtual networks. So a VPN connection using which you can connect the different virtual networks. But to create a VPN connection, you need to manage other resources. And then there is a bandwidth constraint on it. So to overcome this solution, Microsoft has introduced the VNet peering. Now you need to create a peering connection between two different virtual networks. And once the peering connection is created, then the virtual machines in one virtual network can communicate to virtual machines in another virtual network. And the way you manage and filter the traffic within the virtual network, the same way you can manage and filter the traffic within the different virtual networks too. So that will be using route tables and network security groups. So basically virtual network peering is to enable a connection between two different virtual networks so that they can communicate with each other. So now let's discuss the different features of virtual network peering. So because it uses the backbone network of Microsoft, so that means there will be low latency and the high bandwidth, and then there will be no downtime because this is managed by Azure and there is a redundancy in place. So your peering connection will always be up and using the virtual network peering, you can do the transitive connectivity, gateway transit as well as service chaining. I'll explain all these complex scenarios in advanced configuration. So now if I'll discuss the different types of virtual network peering, there are mainly two types. One is regional virtual network peering and another one is the global virtual network peering. And as the name suggests, when you're doing the virtual network peering between two virtual networks which are in the same region, then it's called the regional virtual network peering. However, in some cases, you have to do the virtual network peering among the different regions. So that is also supported. So one virtual network in one region, another virtual network in another region, they can be peered. However, there will be some latency because the traffic will be traveling among the regions and definitely there will be a cost attached to it. But if there is a scenario that you have to use the virtual network peering among the different regions, then the global virtual network peering can be considered. So what are the different use cases? So the different use cases are like I have explained here, the single subscription. If you have multiple subscription and you are maintaining the hub and spoke architecture, in that case, if there is a hub network in the same subscription or a different subscription, then you need to peer the different virtual network so that all the spokes can connect to the hub. Another use case is the different mergers and acquisition. If the two organization, they have a separate Azure environment and they need to communicate with each other privately. In that case, the virtual network peering can be set up between the two different Azure subscriptions. 
So now let's talk about the advanced configuration. You can consider this as single subscription or multiple subscriptions where there is a hub virtual network created and different spoke virtual networks. So basically in this scenario, you want to connect the spoke subscriptions with the hub. And for the advanced configuration, if I'll talk about transitive connectivity, which means if there is a peering connection created between spoke and hub, there is a peering connection here. And there is another peering connection between another spoke and hub network. So that means hub is connected to both the spoke, but there will not be a direct transitive connectivity between different spokes. By default, the application VM cannot connect to the database VM because they are connected to hub. So the connection will not go directly. And for this case, what you can do is you can create a network virtual appliance or a firewall. So firewall will forward the traffic. So while defining the user defined routes and the sub application subnet, you have to define that the traffic going to the database subnet should have a next hop on the Azure firewall or any network virtual appliance which you are using. And once you will define this Azure firewall or any other firewall, they act smartly and they forward the traffic. Then they know that the next hop will be the database subnet. So the virtual network peering doesn't support the transitive connectivity. And to make the connections work between the different spoke networks, you have to use the network virtual appliance along with the user defined routes, which is route table. And another scenario is gateway transit. So when you create a peering connection between the two VNets, you allow the traffic from spoke virtual network one to spoke virtual network two and spoke virtual network two to spoke virtual network one. So this is the default connectivity. But in case you're using the gateway, you have to specifically define that the gateway traffic should be forwarded to the spoke network. So while creation of the peering connection here, you have to define that the gateway in the hub network should be able to forward traffic to the spoke network. And in the spoke virtual network, you have to define in the connection that the traffic from the gateway should be allowed. And once this is done, then the on-prem resources can connect to the resources in the spoke VNet using the VPN gateway in the hub. So you have to define the gateway transit while creating the peering connection. And the third option is the service chaining. So what happens in service chaining is that the traffic from all the subnets will be traveling through network virtual appliance so that the auditing as well as monitoring can be done at a centralized place. And to achieve this, you need to either have a network virtual appliance or the Azure firewall or any other firewall and all the spoke networks or the different virtual networks should be connected to the hub network where the firewall subnet is lying and there should be a peering connection for them. So that means using the peering connection, you set up the service chaining. And once the peering connection is set up, you define the user defined routes so that the traffic from all the subnets should be traveling to the hub virtual network where the firewall is there. And you can enable the intrusion detection or prevention system on the firewall and even enable the monitoring so that you can monitor the traffic going to and from the firewall. So these were the different advanced configuration which can be set up using virtual network peering. Now let's talk about the limitations and the considerations. So the first important consideration before setting up the peering connection is that there should not be a IP CIDR range overlap. So the CIDR of the virtual network one should not overlap with the virtual network two. Otherwise peering connection cannot happen. And if you're using the gateway where there is an on-prem connectivity or any other cloud connectivity, in that case, you have to define the peering connection very carefully because you have to enable the forwarded traffic from gateway and allow traffic from gateway on the spoke side. And when you create a peering connection, the network security groups becomes very important. So this is also one of the important consideration that you, that you have to define the rules of your network security group very carefully. Otherwise, after the peering connection too, the traffic will not flow between the different resources in the peered virtual network. And if we'll talk about the global virtual network peering, in that case, you need to consider, you need to consider the inter-region traffic because the traffic from one region will be going to the another region and there is a cost attached to it. And the final limitation is that if you're using the global virtual network peering, then you cannot connect to the basic load balancer 
which is lying in the peered virtual network. So this is the limitation. However, you can use the standard load balancer and the connectivity between the peered virtual network will work still, but not in the case of basic load balancer. So these are the different limitation and consideration which you have to keep in mind while configuring the peering connections. So this was the explanation of the virtual network peering. Now let's start with the lab where I'll show the step-by-step -step deployment of the virtual network peering. But before that, I want to show how the lab is configured. So in the lab, I have a single subscription. This is the single subscription here. And I have created three virtual networks. Virtual network one in Australia East, virtual network two in Australia East. However, the third virtual network I have created in Australia Southeast. In the virtual network one, I have two subnets, app subnet and database subnet. So there are two different virtual machines created. In the virtual network two, there is only one subnet and a single virtual machine is created. And in the third virtual network, there is an application subnet with a single virtual machine. Now I want to show that without any peering, the virtual machine in application subnet can connect to database subnet. We'll check this. Later, we'll check the connectivity from application subnet to another application subnet in different virtual network, which is not peered. And once we'll set up the peering connection, then the connectivity should work. And finally, I'll create a global virtual network peering between VNet1 and the VNet AUSE. And then show the connectivity between the virtual machine in, in the virtual network 1 to the virtual machine in the different region itself. Now I'll log into the Azure portal and show you all these steps practically. I'm logged into Azure portal now. If I'll go to virtual machines, I have created three virtual machine in Australia East region. However, I'm facing one problem. My subscription doesn't have quota in Australia Southeast region. So I'll not be able to show the connectivity between Australia East and Australia Southeast. However, I have the virtual network. So I'll show the global virtual network peering, but not how the virtual machine can connect to each other. So if I'll quickly show this test VM001, it's a Windows server and it's app subnet which is in virtual network Australia East. And it doesn't have a public IP address. So we have to just connect using the private IP. Same goes to test VM002. It's in database subnet. However, in the same virtual network. And I've created a best in service so that I can connect to the virtual machine to show the connectivity. And if I'll go to the third virtual machine, it's in the different virtual network, which is 002. So let's go to virtual machine 001 and connect it using Beston. So I have provided username and password and connect. So time being, I'll quickly open the virtual machine 002 because I have to connect to this virtual machine from the virtual machine 001. They are in the different subnet, but in the same virtual network. So first I want to show that the resources within a virtual network can connect to each other without any peering connection. So that's the private IP address. I'll close this. Let's open the RDP. Copy the private IP address of virtual machine 002 and connect. If it will prompt for username and password, that means the connection is working fine. And here you go. So I'll quickly provide the username and password. And perfect. I can connect to test VM 002. So now let's try the same thing using the test VM003. It's in different virtual network. So by default, there should not be any connectivity. So let me copy the private IP address and go to virtual machine 001 RDP and connect it to this one. 
and as expected it's just trying the remote connection but it's not working because by default the connection between two different virtual network cannot happen without the peering so let's let's go to virtual network virtual network 001 i'll go to the peerings and add the peering so peering link name let's give it as test peering So now you have to provide the subscription as well as the virtual network. So this is the subscription and the virtual network is 002. However, as you can see here, there's an option where you can do this PNET peering with Southeast region two. That will become the global virtual network peering, but let's stick to the regional peering for now. So now here option is allow the VNet 002 to access virtual network one. Yes. Allow VNet 002 to receive forwarded traffic from 001. So if 002 is forwarding the traffic, that's allowed. Allow the gateway route. So these are the option where you do the gateway transit. So if you are in the spoke network, then you allow the traffic from the gateway. And if you are in the hub network where the gateway is created, then you enable the forwarding. But because there is no gateway created, so I'll just leave these options. Now you have to provide the name again, test peering, same allow the forwarded traffic and no gateway option because we haven't created the VPN gateway and add. And this will add the virtual network peering connection on both the ends. So if we'll go to the peering in virtual network 001 as well as 002, you will see there's a peering connection. It's fully synchronized and connected. Now the same thing should be found in 002 also. We'll go to the peering and there you go. And you will see the remote virtual network from here. So the peering is configured here. Now if we'll try again, it's working fine. So as soon as the virtual network peering is created, you will have the connectivity between the two different virtual networks. You can manage and filter the traffic using the network security group. So if you'll create the rule that only these specific IP address are allowed on these specific ports, then you can define those because in the real time scenarios, not all the resources in one virtual network should connect to all the resources in another one. There should be some level of filtering so that you can define using network security group. Now let's create the peering between Australia East and Australia Southeast, which will be global virtual network peering. I can't show the connectivity between the virtual machines because I can't create the virtual machine in Australia Southeast region. I have to request quota for that. So let's go to 001 Australia East virtual network, go to the peering, add another peering, test Southeast peering. Let's select the virtual network in the Southeast region. Same, you have to allow the forwarded traffic to test Southeast peering. You can give any name, but it's recommended to use the name so that it will be easy for you to refer. If in case in future, you will be making any changes. Done and add. So this will create the peering connection on both the ends. Now, as you can see, the peering connection is created. So there are two peering. One is regional peering. Another one is the global peering. And I have already explained that in global peering, there are some limitation and some consideration because there is a cost attached to the global peering. And if we'll go to another virtual network and to the peering, you can see there is a fully synchronized peering connection there. So this is how you can set up the peering connection between two different virtual networks and then your resources within those virtual network can connect with each other. And I have explained the advanced configurations also, which are used in the real time. So that's all for this video. I hope you liked it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much.